The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And guess what, folks? We got higher markets across the board right now. You're looking at an S&P. We're approaching 4,600 on the S&P. You get a high print of 4,580 overnight. We're trading at 4,576 right now. Tech stocks trading higher. 15,593. You're up by about two-thirds percent in the NASDAQ right now. The Dow's up 105. 35,724 right now. And you get the Russell positive by seven as well. Bitcoin. Pretty tame volatility. Down $200 technically on the session at 62,440. Crude. A little volatility on both directions. We were down to $83 earlier at about 5.30 a.m. We trade above $84 just in the last hour or so. We're trading right now at $83.87. You got gold right now, negative $5 at $18.01. Silver is negative 19 cents at $24.39 right now. And we jumped to notes and bonds. We got the 10-year flat at $130.17. You're talking about a yield right now of 1.63%. That's 1.63% 1 in the 10-year. We jump over to the volatility index. Got a little bit of a spike yesterday in the open, and then just like that, we are under 15 on the VIX. Remar remarkable, considering we're coming into some of the biggest earnings events that we have going on, folks, whether it's today, tomorrow, Thursday, all the big tech stocks almost reporting. Uh, we'll start it off with Facebook. Facebook out with their numbers last night. Little volatility in both directions. The first move was down. The second move was up. And this morning, we're within about $2 of where we closed last night. You're basically $2 away from where you were in Facebook. You're trading at 3.30. You were at 3.28 last night. You look where we, you were prior to the Snapchat earnings of last week. Uh, yes, last Thursday. And Facebook down about $10 from that price point there uh, with their numbers last night. We'll get into those a little bit more. Uh, we're going to kick it off with a little Facebook, though. We'll jump to a lot of stuff happening with Facebook, whether it's those Facebook papers. What are they calling them, right? The algorithm increasingly incites of U.S. lawmakers. Uh, Bloomberg article here talking about U.S. legislators consider liability for automated processes. Bills would hold companies accountable for spreading content. Um, a uh, nice article from the Post out here as well. Uh, the one I want to point out here, and there's a lot to go through here, too much to go through uh, during an hour-long program, How Facebook Shapes Your Feed is the title of the article. If you haven't a chance to check it out, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, not surprising anything that you're going to read in here in terms of what they prioritize, the divisiveness of the posts that they prioritize, basically feeding the, the most divisive posts out there, um, the evolution of what posts get top billing on the user's news feed and what gets obscure. Uh, some of the takeaways from this in about 2017 or so, um, the top posts, let's scroll down a bit here. Since 2018, the algorithm that elevated posts uh, that encourage interaction. Uh, so what they wanted to see was they wanted to see you whether it was commenting and they didn't even want you to see you liking it because liking became pretty pedestrian, okay, that everybody could just scroll through and they like almost everything on their feed. That was not indicative of the meaningful interactions that they wanted. Now, the ridiculous part about this is that so that departure where they wanted meaningful interactions deviated from the ones where they just wanted clip clicks or time spent from the mid 2000s. Uh, it notably gave greater prominence to clickbait articles back in the day. Um, each user's feed reflects their expressed interest for a subset of extremely partisan users. We all know that, that Facebook's showing you the content you want. Uh, the one thing in here, and I'm not sure, uh, I've, I've been reading a bunch of articles about Facebook recently, folks. The one news that really caught my eye today was that, and let's see if I can find it real quickly. Uh, all right, I'm going to have to check it out. Here we go. Here we go. Perfect. So Facebook's algorithm, OK, not familiar with who this is. This is the quote I want to go over, though. It's within one of the, the post articles here. Yeah. How Facebook ships your feed. Um, 
Facebook's al algorithm assigns reaction emojis, including the angry face. Now, it also includes like the love one or the heart one, okay? But not many people are, are using the love and the heart. You get a lot of angry ones. If you have a reaction emoji as opposed to just a like, because likes are not as meaningful, that's what Facebook says. So if you have a reaction emoji, including the angry faces, that algorithm weights that like five times what it would be if you just like the article. Okay, they want anger. They want they want they want real divisive. Whether it's anger or 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 I guess you could say love, but we all know how it goes, folks. Facebook and the cesspool that it's full of. Um, the downside of this approach was that the posts that sparked the most comments tended to be the ones that people um, made people angry or offended them. The document showed Facebook became an angrier, more polarizing place. It didn't help that starting in 2017, the algorithm assigned reaction emoji, including the angry one, five times the weight of a simple like, according to the company documents. Talk about an algorithm that's printing money, though, folks. Uh, so buyer beware over there. Just be aware of the cesspool you're in. And it is. Uh, and they might have some headwinds, man, in a big way. You take a look at the run that they've had recently. You've pulled back from 384. You jump at about the 50 percent there. You come into their earnings at 328. We're going to pop a little bit to 330. And we'll see if the market uh, reacts on the open. A lot of bad press. Almost can't get more bad press than they're getting recently. But nonetheless, you're going to trade higher on the opening bell, up by about two bucks. Facebook shares from 328 to about 330. We jump around to some of the other social media companies coming out with their numbers. Uh, there is Snapchat just holding steady after last week's surprise to the downside. We get Twitter later this week. Twitter shares up with Facebook from 62 to about 60 to 80 so far. And uh, let's jump around and see what else we have going on uh, in this market let's go over to another company with earnings ups delivers profit revenue beat on e-commerce demand ups trading higher this morning let's jump over to their chart first there's the acceleration from 203 to 212 uh remarkable this stock holding up a lot better than fedex recently you're going to be opening right near the all-time highs at 219.59 you compare that to a chart of fedex FedEx going to be $3 higher on the open, maybe having to do with UPS there, but FedEx far off the highs you had recently. You think FedEx is basically back to prices we were trading at over a year ago. Okay, you compare it to UPS where it was a year ago. A year ago, you were trading at about 164. You're going to open at 212 for UPS on their numbers. Now, UPS getting into it, they raised the full year adjusted operating margin target to about 13% from 12.7, so a big number nonetheless. Revenue from UPS U.S. operations rose 7.4 percent. These public companies, it's amazing the way they grow continually. Companies third quarter operating profit rose to about $2.9 billion uh, from 2.36 a year earlier. Now, remember, these companies were crushing it a year earlier, right? Everybody was shipping everything online. On an adjusted basis, operating profit, 271 a share. Market was looking for 255. Revenue rose 9.2 percent. 9.2 percent to 23.18 billion beating expectations at 22.56. So big numbers across the board to beef up its delivery operations. UPS outlined plans last month to buy Rody, a crowdsourced same day delivery company whose major clients include home improvement chain, Home Depot, as they're gonna be spending a little bit of money, but they're taking it to the bottom line there. UPS beating in a big way. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're gonna come back, talking to our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be talking a little bit of earnings. We'll be talking a little bit of Facebook. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years of experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up about 16 points. We get the NASDAQ 100 up 92, the Dow up 95, all the markets accelerating higher. We got a big week of tech earnings going on. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, live on the TD Ameritrade Network, live right here on Tiger TV, noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, walking you through what are you talking about defined risk, talking about earnings, talking about option trades. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep. Uh... You know, the earnings and data are coming at you pretty fast these days now. So everyone's got to, you know, put your seatbelt on, keep your hands inside the boat. I think things are coming at you really fast right now, Tommy. I mean, are you okay with all the green across the board, Kevin? So much for a tough September, I kid. Uh, Want to get your take a little bit on Facebook, man. Some some strong yep. numbers from Facebook. They're trading higher. Uh, it seems like every day, Kevin, I'm reading four or five articles that have a negative spin on Facebook. But, man, that stock, uh, they've overcome the earnings, and they're higher this morning. We'll see how they open in about 11 minutes. But what's your take on Facebook this morning as we're up about a couple bucks on their earnings? Tommy, what's been called the Facebook papers were 17 different articles written about Facebook and about things going on in Facebook. And it's amazing to me how Facebook is a reflection of our society. And yet we want to blame Facebook for reflecting our society back at us. And people want to look at it from a trading perspective and judge it based on that. And all this company does is make money. And they're trying to tame this you know, you could say that Facebook does, you know, leads people down a path. Well, I, I don't need anyone to lead me down anywhere or, or do anything. It's like, Tommy, what brings it, it's like someone who has gained 20 pounds in during COVID and you want to sue the inventor of the fork because <laughs> you gained weight. It's unbelievable how we try to put our problems and blame someone other than ourselves. So when I look at Facebook, I look at it from purely a trading perspective and a profitable company, and it makes it a lot easier to deal with. I wait for sell-offs like this, and then I trade it hard on the downside, Tommy. 
Nice, man. Yeah, a little personal personal responsibility goes a long way across a lot of things in life, man. And I agree, and I'm not a big fan of Facebook. I don't spend much time on there, and I profess. I call it a cesspool. This is my own deal, man. Um, but that's a little personal responsibility in myself. You know, you don't spend the time on there because I do think it has a negative bias in terms of just overall happiness. And uh, I think one thing the Facebook paper is kind of showing there, man, is that, yeah, they're, they're, they're playing with that data feed. They're throwing data in front of you that's not maybe beneficial to your happiness. So step out of that circle, folks, and get out of there if that's what's happening. Uh, so we fast forward, Kevin. We got a big day today going on, of course. We got a big week, man, in tech earnings. And we got a VIX last night, Kevin, with a 14 handle. Uh, and we're sitting at 1501 right now. Remarkable low volatility as we commit to some big earnings events this week. Doesn't get much bigger almost. Yeah, but, the you know, the flow has been extremely positive, Tommy, as you know. So that'll take a little of the premium out of VIX, right? And we're sitting at 15. Remember, the all-time average for the VIX, once it became the S&P 500 away from the OEX and the S&P 100, is about 15.39. So now we okay. find ourselves below that number. And, you know, a lot of the risk, some of it coronavirus, some of it, you know, the new news coming out about uh vaccines is really good news for children 6 to 11. That's all good news. Our corporate earnings are beating at about an 80% clip. This market coming out of a pretty bumpy September is looking awfully healthy, Tommy. I mean, if you had said, Kevin, towards the end of September, even the beginning of October, that we're going to come into the big week of tech earnings late October, right? We're going to already have the markets at all-time highs across the board. We're going to have the VIX under 15, and that's just by Tuesday morning of the week that we get some of the biggest FANG stocks out there. I don't, I, I would have believed you, man, but I said I don't know that's how that's going to happen. Um, it's quite a turnaround. Uh, Tesla, let's talk a little Tesla for a second, man. Yeah. Quite a day for Tesla. Elon Musk, I think he made like $30 billion or something yesterday, one of the biggest rises ever. Day. Oh, not bad. Not bad for a Monday to kick off the week, man. You think he gets uh, get, up in the morning and checks futures? I see. Yesterday, <laughs> he, he might have, man. Um, and, and, hey, you got a $4.2 billion sale over the weekend, Kevin. Um, right. I imagine your wealth might go up on a Monday morning. Uh, what's your take? I, I mean, mean it's here's just, the thing about Tesla let's and go. what we're seeing right now. Fleet sales, right? There's a reason why Tesla was up and Ford and GM were down, right? Because that is... Not just EVs becoming more accepted and uh, more popular. It's now he's eaten the lunch of, you know, the big car makers that counted on fleet sales for a big part. And if you think that's the first one and only, I don't think that's true. And so that's a big game, another big game changer in terms of uh, Tesla's acceptance. So, you know. Don't you know you don't have a long enough show, Tommy, for me to talk about <laughs> the relationship between EVs and crude oil and gas and all that. But Tesla's acceptance, you know, he is. Make no mistake, I've said this before on your show. He's the Thomas Edison of our generation. Yeah, and you can't argue with it, man. I mean, he's you know he's a dynamic man. He's obviously brilliant in many ways in terms of the companies he has. Uh, he's a great promoter, which we've seen it. Whether it was Steve Jobs, the way he promoted, right? When you lead some of these companies, man, you have to be promoting what you're doing um, if you're going to kind of change the world, which is what he's doing in a big way, man. And yeah, the fleet deal. Uh, I was talking to my dad yesterday morning. We were just saying. I mean, how cool is that, right? In terms of you get to, he said, my dad's never driven a Tesla. I've never driven a Tesla, right? We said, well, how cool is that, man? Maybe next time we rent a car, we'll go to Hertz. Exactly. Uh, and once right? you do, because of the acceptance of Teslas and the overall uh, uh, popularity of the people that own them, look out. I agree, man. Pretty cool. $4.2 billion sale. And, and they corner the market almost. One-tenth of their entire production right now, Hertz has. So going to be tough for some of those other car companies to even maybe have Teslas on their lot. Uh, we'll see how that proceeds. So we move on to today. Kevin, what are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at noon? Another day, another big group of high-profile names. First, Boeing. And then, nice. uh, like Folio, we'll do a presentation on McDonald's. They have a Ooh. great presentation. They actually came to us and said, we have really fascinating data on McDonald's. And then Google Alphabet in the final segment. So Tom White and I will be going through some big names today. 
Those are awesome, man. Now, we have some McDonald's in my newsletter, Kevin, this thing. You know, they got a lot of real estate going on in there. They've handled the COVID pandemic obviously pretty well with the chart saying. Um, and Boeing, talk about like like just lag in the market, right? Down to 90 yeah. bucks in the COVID lows. You're still sitting at 212. Remarkable, Kevin. If you had bought Boeing last June, you're talking about 16 months ago, you're still in the red on that company, man. That thing yep. got up to 234 last June. You're sitting at 212. Uh, and of course, we know Alphabet, Google, they were the ones in the crosshairs uh, last year, right? And so much for that one, man. As they were in the crosshairs, all the talk was kind of about them being the, the boogeyman. And uh, Google just been one of the strongest companies this year, up to 27.75 right now, just off the high of 29.36. Well, Kevin, you're gonna have plenty to talk about, man. We look forward to the program at noon Eastern time. We'll be watching. We appreciate the education as always, man. All right, you have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure as always, man. Take care. Folks, tune in. This is a great week to check it out of all weeks. We got a bunch of big tech earnings. We got the VIX. You just heard it actually under historical lows. Uh, that's at a time, folks, that you're seeing volatility premiums, okay, at a lower level than historical averages. And with everything else going on, maybe that's an opportunity to pay a little premium. That's where you got to decide. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets sitting in positive territory, kind of right where we started off with the S&Ps. I mean, look at this action, right? Since about 4 a.m. Eastern time, you've been shopping around within a few points of basically where we're at. We're trading at 45.75. NASDAQ up 101 right now. You got the Dow up 93, the Russell up three as well. Crude, 83.77 right now. Gold trading lower a bit down at 17.95. And we jump over to that VIX right now. VIX sitting at 15.01, quite a price tag. Let's jump over to Facebook, see how they're opening up. Within a dollar of yesterday's close, not bad. Facebook trading at 327 right now. Uh, you're down about $2 as we're dropping a bit on Facebook. Strong numbers are Facebook. As Kevin said, they continue to print money. It does remind me of Google a little bit. Uh, difference is, is I think public sentiment versus Facebook is really teetering on a level that Google has not. Now, Google, they have monopolistic tendencies in a big way. That might be coming for them. OK, but they're not tweaking algorithms that are causing people to hate each other. So you, you merge those two. You know, I think the public battle that Facebook has is going to be a lot more difficult because of the things coming out and the internal documents, um, the things you have in terms of even Instagram and the harm that Instagram does to whether it's young teenage girls, um, self-image, stuff like that. Google being a monopolistic company, they're coming after them, but just the public sentiment of a Facebook battle that's going on with all of these paper papers out there, it's going to be a tough one to get over, I think, in the short term at least, and potentially in the long term for Facebook as well. Google's got a monopoly on search. We know that. They continue to print money. The, the business Google does on YouTube, too. YouTube is its own uh, Netflix Disney content distribution network in its own entirety. Um, you do, you go down those YouTube wells, right? You just get stuck in a in a in a YouTube well, and you just keep going. Uh, there's a lot of great content on YouTube, and and Google owns it all, which is remarkable. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on? Let's jump to toys. Let's jump to Hasbro. Get those toys before holiday season, folks. Hasbro warrants supply chain bottlenecks to hit holiday sales. Uh, out with their numbers, disruption costs about 100 million in lost toy orders in just the third quarter. The company warned of a further hit to sales during the crucial holiday shopping season. Now they were a little bit higher coming in, right? Where are they? A uh, little bit higher coming into the open and they're extending those gains up 3.7% even on this. Uh, you got Transformers toys, Nerf blasters. Majority of the 100 million in orders that were not filled in the third quarter had been delivered and it was working around the clock to secure transport for its goods. I mean, that's a given. That's not even worth saying, folks. A toy company that's having supply chain problems is working really hard to get them through. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it expects 2021 revenue to rise 13 to 16 percent. Market was looking for 14.2, so they like to hear that. Um, Mattel raised their 2021 forecast just last week, saying it was employing a number of strategies, including pulling forward production and contracting more ocean freight capacity to ring in a strong holiday season. Net revenue up 11 percent. The company earned a buck 96. The market was looking for a buck 69. They trade higher on that news, deservedly so. GE lifts 2021 earnings forecast flags challenging operating environment. Yeah, I would say the least. Uh, Boston-based company. 2021 adjusted profit in the range of a buck 80 to 210. The market was looking for quite a wide, wide range of 120 to two dollars. We jump over to GE, and they trade higher this morning, up about two percent. Let's see how Tesla is trading on the open this morning. Higher prices, up another 1.7 percent. You're trading at 1,042. Let's jump over to the fundamentals. We're now talking about a company valued at. 1.04 trillion dollars remarkable reading yesterday first trillion dollar company to technically have junk bond status uh quite a cushion i think is how bloomberg put it in terms of equity over that junk bond status uh in tesla that may change sometime soon you start getting 4.2 billion dollar orders for 100,000 vehicles left and right not sure they should be in junk bond status anytime soon uh, Kathy Woods, so this was interesting. You had Jack Dorsey of Twitter out there tweeting that hyperinflation's coming. You have Kathy Woods disputing it. I didn't, I want to bring it up because I don't quite agree with the logic that she has going on here. And she says in 2008, 2009, when the Fed started quantitative easing, I thought inflation would take off. I was wrong. Instead, velocity, the rate at which money turns over per year, declined, taking away its inflationary sting. Velocity is still falling. Uh, and she goes on. So this is ARK Innovation, of course, okay? Uh, and artificial intelligence, she says, 
the, the training costs for AI is dropping 40 to 70 percent a year, which she believes is record breaking deflationary force. I have no concept of what the costs are for inflation, artificial intelligence. She probably has her finger on that pulse a lot greater than I do with all the analysts she has at ARC. Uh, I don't envision, though, that, folks, a dropping cost of AI is somehow going to just stop rapid inflation. When cost and prices decline, velocity and disinflation, not deflation, follow. If consumers and businesses believe that prices will fall in the future, they will wait to buy goods and services, pushing the velocity of money down. I mean, there's definitely a factor here of waiting, right? If you're in the used car market, folks, probably makes sense to wait a little time before you buy there. But are you waiting for gas? Are you waiting for food? Are you waiting for a rent? Are you waiting to rent a house that has gone up 20% in the Tampa market potentially? Since the tech and telecom bust and the global financial crisis in 2008, 2009, many companies have catered to short-term oriented shareholders who want profits, dividends now. Uh, they leverage their balance sheets to pay dividends and buy back shares. They have not invested enough in innovation and probably be forced to service their debts by selling increasingly obsolete goods at discounts. She said the S&P 500 companies that did not invest enough in the future will also be de a deflationary force in the economy in what is known as creative destruction. I just don't agree with it. I want to put it out because I don't agree with it at all, not to the degree that she's talking about. She's talking about that's a big enough force to override everything else going on in this market, um, that somehow companies that don't invest money in in basically technology you know don't invest money in whether it's just capital goods and all you're doing is buying back shares and doing dividends and we've had a lot of that we've had a record amount of just buyback and dividends uh i don't think that that's just going to allow them to sell their crappy goods at a discount somehow offsetting deflation i mean i read this earlier and i said what is going on here this is just not a solid argument in my opinion in terms of that artificial intelligence costs are dropping and there's going to be a bunch of crappy companies trying to sell their goods real cheaply so inflation won't be a big deal i does that one make sense to anybody please give me a call 877-927-6648 uh i don't envision that's how things are going to play out she does and uh the market will tell us who is right or wrong as we progress into the future verizon they're going to be partnering with amazon to use project Cooper Satellite Internet for Rural Broadband. So they're partnering with Amazon to use the satellite internet system the tech giant is developing to expand excuse me, to expand rural broadband access in the U.S. Uh, Verizon was not moving much pre-market. Disclosure, my mom has some Verizon. She worked for them before retiring. Uh, Verizon up about four tenths percent with the market today. Uh, you jump to Amazon shares. Ooh, there you go. Amazon up 2.4% today. Watch out, up to 3,400 bucks. Uh, now, Amazon is out with their numbers on Wednesday, I believe. We jumped to the earnings. Uh, excuse me, Thursday. Amazon's out with their numbers on Thursday. We get Apple on Thursday as well. Uh, today, you get Microsoft out with their numbers. Microsoft right now. Let's jump over. Microsoft trading higher by about three quarters of percent. We'll take a look at Microsoft when we come back. They got about a six dollar move priced into their numbers. And uh, as our man Kevin Hinks just said, we got Google. Nice, easy round number. One hundred dollars priced into their move tonight. Twenty eight ten coming into that number. Google trading higher as well. Stay tuned, folks. Be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of McDonald's up here. McDonald's up 82 cents. Disclosure, see, we have some McDonald's in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. You take a look at McDonald's. We had been looking at here an A to B, C to D, potentially going all the way back to a year ago. Now, this is a weekly I have up here. You're trading at 178. You make it to 231. You back to 202. Uh, it's been a slow, steady rise. You really accelerated a, above that B point the week of, I think you're talking about April. Let's see. We got a high there of uh, 231.91 yes we did we got above that on april 5th uh you were at a price of 230 we've pulled back a bit 238 now you jump over to the analyze tab seven dollar and 25 cent move they'll be coming out with their earnings tomorrow after the bell wednesday mcdonald's seven dollars 25 cents jumping back to tonight as we said microsoft they'll be out with their numbers talk about coming into things with expectations folks uh there's almost been no pullback on this stock since $132 a year and a half ago. Did you hear that? There's almost been no pullback in Microsoft for a year and a half as you've went up 250%. That's some expectations, folks. I have some Microsoft in my retirement account. We almost all do if you're in any type of an, an index. You have some Microsoft in your account. You're going to be coming into it. There's the action today, 310. We had a high print pre-market on What's that? After the market on Thursday of 313. Now, they'll be looking for about a $7 move. Not really a big move, right? Just more than 2%. Kind of remarkable, just a 2% move with how this thing moves sometimes. Um, but the market, not too worried, I guess, about Microsoft earnings. Now, you also get Google. Google out uh, with their numbers tonight. A little bit of a bigger move there. You're talking about, what's that? Uh, between about a 3 and 4% move, a $100 move priced into the earnings. You take a look at the chart for Google. Now, Google's up 1.2% ahead of their numbers today. You take a look at the daily. This thing had been quite a channel line here. You take a look at the weekly to get the full context. Uh, now, a little bit of a different story, right? <clears throat> In terms of Google, let's, let's put it on a three-year weekly and back it out again. Google did take off in March, but things really accelerated last September. And that was when they were the boogeyman that had to do with potential, um, excuse me, with potential regulation coming down the line. You traded from 1733, the week of August 31st, down to 1406. And then you just took off in September. You double the price from 1406 to 1936. Now, putting this thing back on a daily, 
And just encompassing the run that we had when you really started back in September, you could look for the run really in January where the channel line matches up pretty well. Uh, but nonetheless, a pretty well-defined channel line to the upside. You did break below that channel line towards the end of September. You just came up and tested it. An ode to our man, Bud Rolfs. Uh, not what you want to see potentially. going to be very important when we see how Google reacts as it gets back to this channel line potentially. What you don't want to see, folks, is you break out of the channel line, you come back, you test that channel line, and then you trade lower, which is kind of what it did uh, towards the uh, last few days, end of last week, when you gapped lower on Google. You're trading at 28.10. You're up 1.2%. You got a $100 move priced into earnings tonight. Look at these tech stocks. My goodness. Amazon driving this number, I'm sure. You got the NASDAQ 100 up a full percent right now. Is that an all-time high? I think it might be, right? Nope, we're within about 50 points of the all-time highs. 15,708, we're trading at 15,652. We jump back to Amazon. Look at this move, up 2.4% right now. Quite a pop. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. Digesting their move, higher prices continuing. Remarkable, Tesla up 2.7%, 1,052. When we were talking to Kevin Hinks, um, he was saying the Thomas Edison, potentially, right? He was... Um, Somebody said, I think it might have been Chamath, saying that the, the next richest person in the world will be the person who figures out a different way to harness energy, something like that. Um, what it basically was saying is when Elon first became the richest person in the world, and everyone was saying, oh, it's a car company, right? No, that is not why he became the richest person in the world. The richest person in the world is Elon Musk right now because he figured out a way to harness energy. And that's what Tesla is. They are an energy company. Uh, and the story goes, we're up to 1,052. I mean, it is remarkable, the run that this thing has had. Even you back things up, folks, you want to talk about a buying opportunity, right? Folks, five months ago, we were trading at 546. You got a 100% run in that price point. My goodness, you are trading at multiples um, that get a little bit dicey. I mean, they're, they're probably approaching 200 times earnings, something like that. Um, and yeah, as Dan's saying, Chamath's always talking up his own his own book if he's not starting another SPAC, right, Dan? Um, trying to exit some, some Tesla potentially. Uh, but it does make sense because he's not becoming the richest man in the world by running a car company because the multiples he's dealing with, um, not applicable to car companies. Um, that's, that just puts it what it is. They got a lot more going on than that in Tesla. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. We got home prices for August. I think this was out at about 9 o'clock this morning. Hinting at possible cooling in the market. S&P Case Schiller says, don't say that. No, prices rose 19.8% year over year in August, which is the same as the previous month. That's the cooling, folks. We're only growing at about 20% year over year, which is the same as last month quite the bar that's been set in the real estate sector when you grow at 19.8 percent year over year you match the previous month and the headline says the market is cooling there are signs that the price growth could be cooling off in otherwise red hot housing market august data also suggests that the growth in housing prices will still strong maybe beginning to decelerate so they put it the 10 city comp uh 18.6 down from 19.2 there's some of the stuff they're talking about. 20 city comp rose 19.7, down from 20. It's still staggering company numbers across the board. Phoenix, San Diego, and good old Tampa saw the highest year-over-year -year gains among the 20 cities in August. Phoenix, 33.3. I can't spit out these numbers. I was trying to get to the Tampa number too quickly because I'm a little biased. Uh, followed by San Diego with a 26.2% increase. And Tampa with a 25.9% increase. It's staggering, folks. There's no way around it. Those are just bananas numbers. They're translating to rents. Rents are sticky. They're not going to go back. Um, as somebody that owns a duplex myself, let alone my dad, does a lot of real estate, as you know, you sign a contract, folks, and you're, these numbers, those, those rents are going up. Um, they're going up, bottom line, That's and we all know it. Uh, eight of the 20 cities reported higher price increases in the year ending in August 2021 versus the year ending in July 2021. Price gains were partly fueled by a drop in mortgage rates. We know how that helps the market. Um, the 30-year fixed loan rate fell below 3% in July and stayed there until mid-September. It's risen a bit to about 3.25%. I mean, just I, I, I've never seen numbers in my lifetime in this number, folks. Um, you're talking about prices for houses going up 26 percent year over year. 
crazy action across the board. All right, what else we got going on in terms of stocks that are moving? Coinbase I wanted to get to. Now, Coinbase, they get uh, coverage from Citi with a buy high-risk rating. I think they pushed out a bond out there as well. Coinbase, down six-tenths percent. That is the weekly. You're at 324, quite a run they've had. You take a look at the daily. This thing has been a one-way rocket ship from 230 up to 324. I mean, it makes sense when you got Bitcoin pushing 62,380. We jump over Ethereum as we come into the break right now. Ethereum, 4202, just off the highs of 4406. Last week on the 21st, we make it to a high of 4404 within $2 of that high. Crypto on fire recently. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of DraftKings up here. So DraftKings looks like they're not going to be spending Boku bucks to purchase and tame DraftKings. Uh, they're up 6%. They were all the way up to 52.95. The headline walks away from potential $22.4 billion offer for Entain. Uh, they were up higher. You have Entain, obviously. Um, losing that bid so DraftKings steps away from the deal they had offered 2800 pence a share in cash in stock on september 19th so only a month later british bookmakers ladbrokes and corral ladbrokes i'm somewhat familiar with uh just because of the name and the brand that they have 
Uh, the British love to gamble over there, folks. When I was playing a bunch of poker, I uh, actually went over for a European poker tour event. Man, this is going back, I want to say 2013 potentially, maybe 2000. No, 2000, it would have been 2011 or 2010. I think it played a European poker tour event in London. Only time I visited London. Very cool. And I uh, met a fine gentleman. And what he did there is that he was a sports better. Um, but what people don't realize, and they're going to realize because it's coming to the U.S. now, is that in-game betting is a monumentally large deal over in Europe. And what it is is, because we all know the market, is that basically you have a bid ask for the entire game on who's going to win, right? And he was betting on tennis. And what he actually did is he had people in the stands, in the tennis matches he was betting on, that would text him the moment a point was done, and he had like a split-second advantage to know which way the bid and the ass were going to move because he actually had people in the stands that were texting him which point, who won what, and that he was able to move the bid ask and be a market maker and just know the market was about to shift point by point as they were betting on tennis in game. Uh, public information, you know, they just had a quicker access to it. Point being, uh, those are big, big books over there in Europe, but they're going to walk away. $22.4 billion. Looks like they're not interested just yet, and the market likes that they're not going to spend the cash just yet. But guess what? You're still well below the highs we had earlier this year at 74.38 for DraftKings. All right, folks, stay tuned. Should be an interesting day in the markets. We got Microsoft. We got Google after the bell tonight. We get the NASDAQ 100 up 134 points. We got Amazon charging higher ahead of their earnings on Thursday up 2.1%. We got Tesla making all-time highs. Look at this, up 4.5% yet again, 1,070. So much from reaching 1,000. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.